All right, so the hashtag today is Save Them Now. We're talking about babies and mothers. Picture that. Later here on the show, we'll bring you a, 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 the live ceremony that will unveil the multimedia fundraiser in partnership with First Lady Rebecca Ekufuado. Earlier this morning, staff at the mother and baby units at the Akonfuanochi Teaching Hospital were upbeat about the launch of this fundraiser following um, our documentary, which highlighted the consistent deaths of babies and mothers largely due to lack of space. In the meantime, though, the First Lady is appealing for all Ghanaians to help in this project. I implore and plead with all Ghanaians who uh, would want to help to come out and uh, help us raise the funds or bring whatever they have to, to help the situation. We cannot allow this to go on. And so please, please, please come and help with whatever you have. Kichwa Bienswa and um, so that we can as soon as possible solve this problem. Kumasi is a city. It's not like it's some village somewhere and it's really appalling what is going on in a city in Ghana and we really need to do something as soon as possible about this. First Lady Rebecca Ekufuado, and you know that this is all about uh, our documentary Next to Die, which is Joy News' special assignment initiative. We can see excerpts of that documentary. Once we're done that, the producer of that documentary, Seth Kwame Boating, will join me and we'll talk about what the program would look like much later today. Here are... <laughs> Last year, 2016, we had 91 women dying as a result of pregnancy and complications in Confanochi. There's no reason why any woman should get pregnant, walk into a hospital to deliver, and then lose her life as a result. It's pathetic. If you have the best of skills, but you are overwhelmed with the loot of work, then errors would come. And through that, sometimes babies will die. A fifth of the babies who come in will end up dying. Um, so that, that would try, maybe what? You know, on, on, on a bad day, we can lose six, seven babies. Uh, we've had days when we've lost as many as 10 in a day. As you can see, we have only two beds. So, um, unfortunately, if we have more than two patients delivering at the same time, it means that one person has to deliver elsewhere. At times, we have patients delivering on the on the floor because um, the place will be full. The patient will come in second stage, and that we need to conduct the delivery on the ground. And, and, and what could be the effect of that? The effect is the infection. The baby can be infected, the, 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 uh, the, uh, the, the mother can be infected, and aside that, there will be other complications like bleeding. A facility to deal with this crisis has been abandoned for decades. Uh, it started in 1974 by the then President Ignatius Kutu Ashampo as a president. Along the way, he stopped and revive in some time. But unfortunately, as financial status of the building is so high, we were not able to complete it. Every government comes, they want to do it, but it has never been completed. Who will end these avoidable debts? Any leader willing to say, 
This project will be completed under my watch. Join me as I tell you more in this documentary titled Next to Die. Pregnancy is a beautiful thing for many women. I am very pregnant. Very, 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 very pregnant. And um, I can deliver right now. The thought of bringing a human being into the world only that makes you excited so i i think god must be proud at the point when he was creating human beings because even us when you're you're about to deliver or you're pregnant the way you're happy and excited about it it means that god must be really excited when he was creating man Certainly, God must be proud of himself, but are we proud of ourselves as a nation when we allow those children to die and their mothers along with them as well? Seth Kwame Boateng did that documentary. He joins me now in the studio. It's good to have you once again on the show. Thank How you, are Gitti. you doing? I'm, I'm okay. And you have uh, two yourself, right? Or you have one? I have one. One on the way. I have okay. one, yeah. So you understand, <laughs> you understand the process and you know how serious it is and the reason why we must pay all of the mm. attention to it. And you have said that over and over again. First of all, let's walk us through the program today. What are we to expect? So we are starting at exactly 5. Okay. 5, the opening prayer will come. There will be a welcome address from the office of the First Lady. Um, then there will be an address from the hospital, Confonoche. Um, the management is in town uh, represent, to represent the hospital. Okay. After that, multimedia also deliver a message. Then we have a short documentary I have put together mm. just for, for this uh, occasion that will be played at that time. Okay. Then the first lady, um, no, the contractor uh, working on this project will come and do a presentation, let us know the kind of structure he's mm. putting up and why we must all support. Then the first lady will come and launch the, the program and uh, we, we, we take the money. People are coming with uh, their checks. Okay. And that's not today I've got a number of calls, number of organizations ready with their checks to come and present. Okay. So we are hoping we're going to raise the initial 10 million cities needed for this project. All right. So what's in this special documentary that you put together, which will be played earlier, later today? So I went back to Confonoche to uh, speak to some of the victims, people, parents who have been victims, mm. and also about why it's important, the importance that we must place on this, that to that Ghanaians should support what we are doing. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've also spoken to the hospital administration to let us understand why Ghanaians must see this as a humanitarian crisis and why we must all support. Then um, I spoke to the first lady uh, in this documentary, the first lady telling us exactly what she wants to do and um, the, the assistance she will need from the public and why we must all help her and the multimedia family to raise this amount to save lives of babies. Okay. Uh, because we can't allow the four death a day babies to continue. We must have to do something to reduce the, 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 that. Mm. So we're looking at an initial 10 million. But we also know the government was working towards, you know, uh, completing the project that has thought for uh, exactly. 40 years. Is there any update on okay, that? Okay, so well? I know a number of investors have come forward. Okay. They are going through the process with them. Um, they would have to do a lot of things before they settle on one. Okay. And I understand that it's ongoing. That I, as I've been saying, um, the engineers told us, AESL, they are working on the main project. They told us that even if they get the money today, mm -hmm. it will take them two years okay. to finish right. the main building. So what we are looking at is an interim measure, what okay. we can do in the interim to reduce the debts. Okay. That's what we are looking at because the four deaths a day, we can't mm. allow that to continue. And that's why we're raising this 10 exactly. million. Who's coming? Do we have an idea? Who I know a number of companies, um, banks, and insurance companies, other institutions, the MPC, all of them mm. have indicated that they are coming to give us something. Uh, today I got a call from um, judges they have an association okay uh, they also called me this afternoon that they are also ready wow. with something a number of people have called okay. in fact some uh, have come in ready to give something kind right. 
um, so that we can we can sell and add it to the money oh, I see. Uh, yeah we are looking for so people are interested and yesterday I said something that wherever you find yourself in your small office just gather yourself uh, your friends put together something there were various WhatsApp groups uh, you're on your school WhatsApp group tell them to also come and support you gifty because it's also your project okay. so they should all come and support what you are of doing. Of course, here at Multimedia, we're paying our own, mm. uh, yeah, we're, we're putting in our own contribution, which I believe, will that be presented today at the program? I, I don't know. It may be tomorrow on air. I, uh, yeah. Okay, okay. But then let, let's talk about, um, and b that's before before I let you go. After we make that money that we're looking for today, and then what next? Okay, so I have seen the artist, uh, what is the impression of? Artistic impression. Artistic impression right. of um, the building we are putting up. Very nice. Very, very nice. And uh, so as soon as we get enough money, uh, the first lady, I'm told, will go to Kumasi, break grounds for work to start. And we have been told that in a matter of three months, they can start using this facility. Wow. So the 10 million cities we're looking for, it's not about the structure, not the structure alone, but equipment, things we need to equip. That facility as well. Sounds very exciting yes. to me, Sid. Uh, I, I believe that you'll be there at the program yes, today, and then we will be there live. Of course, you have me here in the studio, and we'll be coordinating that uh, that thing. Seth Kwame Boateng, producer of that chilling documentary about how mothers and babies are dying at the Konfonoji Teaching Hospital today. We're launching that 10 million bid that will help us to stop. I mean, that's an uh, an, an immediate. Uh, immediate term solution to the problem as we look at solving it in the long term. Seth, thank you very much for, for coming. So if you haven't been to the First Lady's office today, you have to stick to your set because we're taking you there much later in the show. Mama Vyoswabwaje is standing by and I'll be crossing over to her and we'll bring you all of the updates and I believe that you'll also be interested to support. If you are, we'll tell you how you can support as well. Right now though, let's move away from mothers and babies dying because we are saving them and talk about the Accra Metropolitan Assembly. Well, they have embarked on a demolition, a massive demolition exercise as at the Kwame Nkrumah interchange to rid the city of congestion. The joint operation between the AMA task force and the police destroyed about 200 makeshift structures belonging to some Bye. sellers who have been doing business on the pedestrian walkway and other unauthorized places. Public relations officer of the AMA, Numo Blafo, said they will replicate the exercise in other parts of the city. Joy News' Maxwell Agbaba monitored the exercise and has come through with this report. It's an operation to rid the city of congestion and the AMA tax force are leaving no stone on turn in carrying out this exercise. Here at the circle interchange area, they are destroying all makeshift structures on the pedestrian walkway. This fire in the background that you can see was started by the tax force. And what is happening is that they are dumping all the makeshift structures into this fire. But let me get closer um, to the public relations officer of um, the Accra Metropolitan Assembly, Numbo Blafo. Here. Well, I think somewhere in March, we issued a statement informing all people selling on the pavements and then along the roads and our foot bridges that they should relocate because these spaces are not meant for their activities. About two, a fortnight later, we issued a reminder. Since then, our information van has been coming around. In fact, individually, we have also been coming around to inform them that definitely we will come so they should remove or they should relocate from these um, areas. But it seems they were recalcitrant, as we all know. So this morning, we have started. And this exercise that we are undertaking is not just for circle area. We're looking at all the areas that are being encroached upon by traders, somewhere like Kaneshi, the CBD, we're looking at Abeka La Paz. In fact, everywhere within the metropolis that we have this kind of nonsense, we're going to remove them. So are you just looking at congestion on the um, pedestrian walkway or you are looking at other parts of the market as well? 
Well, the markets are meant for trading activities, and therefore, for the markets, we are not saying we're going to move people out of the market. We want them rather to go into the markets. That's what we want them to do. There are some who are accusing you of not doing this exercise uh, with a human face. In fact, uh, you witness it yourself, some of the sellers raining insults and curses uh, you know, on us. Are you doing this with a human face? Did you of give course. them enough if you, notice? If you, if, you, if you recall, if since March, we have issued statement after statement, giving you reminders, coming here individually to speak with you. What again? Which human face again do you want us to use? And you see, if you even you ask some of the reporters that were here, at other places, they themselves were removing their things because they knew that um, since we have informed them, definitely we will remove them, you understand? So they themselves were, it is only just this place that they are trying to be stubborn, but then that will not deter us from doing what we're supposed to do. If you see scores of people gathered uh, along the side of the road, they are not really doing anything. A lot of them are protesting what is happening here. <laughs> Woman here in the background is wailing uncontrollably. What she's saying is that they are disappointed in the government, mentioning President Ekufuado's name, saying that President Ekufuado come and save us. They are robbing us of our livelihoods, and that is what is happening here. What she's saying runs across what a lot of the market women here think about the current situation here at the circle interchange. from the AMA tax force are destroying these makeshift structures and they put them onto the track and then they carry them to a different location. They say that previous uh, years what happens is that usually when they destroy the structures these sellers come back, fix them and then do business with them. So but now we don't have any job in Ghana here now. Even the government promised us more job will come but somebody like me don't have any job. Only just I stand here to sell my things and get something for my family. But now, everything lost. Even president should be careful. Uh, four years is an corner. Four years is an corner. The same thing happened to Okova Napo. The same thing will happen to uh, Okova. You should be careful. You should be careful. If you think about the people in the nation, don't do that. Don't do that. case that the AMA tax force are gradually reaching that target of reading the city of congestion, especially here on the pedestrian walkway at the Kwame Nkrumah interchange. In fact, when you stand here, you can actually walk freely without any uh, human traffic here on the stretch. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> 
Corona, Matia, the Baba Church can honor. I'm an Essentially, what this gentleman is saying, he's overwhelmed with emotion right now. I, I'm trying to get his attention, but it looks like he's saying that um, if, 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 if they're going to have to destroy their basic structures, where they sell all of that, what do they want them to do? Do they want them to resort to illegal ways of getting money like Amron? He says they voted for government and they didn't expect this to happen to them. Senior, what I'm saying is that um, usually they use umbrellas um, here and during their business. He says um, the AM officials came and then confiscated the umbrellas. Agitation galore. This is still the pause of make it to end of hell.